Leasing your land for solar can turn sunshine into a gold mine, securing your ticket to decades of steady, hands-free income. Today, I'm going to talk through the fundamentals of solar leases and how you can get started. Hi, I'm Nico, Senior Manager at Pivot Energy. At Pivot, we've helped landowners and farmers across the country unlock their land's potential with solar. Imagine a steady stream of income guaranteed for decades. Under a solar lease, Pivot pays landowners to rent their land to construct and operate a solar project, otherwise known as a solar farm. These projects help landowners keep their land in the family and allow individuals to decide how to provide the most value based on their own properties. Under a solar land lease, landowner like you rents a portion of your property to a solar energy developer, like Pivot Energy. Then, we take on the cost of building and maintaining a solar project, partnering with farmers, ranchers, and local land use experts to appropriately maintain a property. The best part, once paperwork is complete, you don't have to lift a finger. Curious about the specific benefits of solar farms? Watch this video linked below for a deeper dive into the advantages of solar farms. There are several different but related key terms that are fundamental to understanding a solar lease. They are land, leased area, and property. Starting with land, this refers to your entire property, the whole parcel you own. But the solar panels won't necessarily occupy every square foot. That's called the leased area, which is the specific area designated to house the project. The leased area is a dedicated zone within the land. In some cases, the leased area could encompass the entirety of the land, but it could also be a smaller section, depending on the size of the parcel, the potential size of the project, and landowner preferences. Finally, there's the term property, which is the leased area plus any easements related to the project. From a high level, Pivot needs easements to be able to build and operate the project. These easements may include access to the property, the ability to build transmission lines, ensuring the project gets sunlight, and assigning a temporary staging area during construction. Now that we have those terms defined, let's dive into the details surrounding the leased area. As mentioned, the leased area is determined by a few factors, including the intended size of the project, size of the land, and landowner preferences. It's important to know that we designed the leased area to ensure that we have at least enough room that we think we might need to build the projects. Sometimes that means including a little extra room just to be safe. We create this buffer to ensure we have enough space to navigate the potential encumbrances like wetlands, topography, or even hidden wildlife habitats, things we might not discover until we get further into the development process. As we delve deeper into your project, our development team will gather more information about the leased area and refine the exact placement of the solar panels within that zone. This meticulous planning ensures optimal efficiency for your land and for the solar farm. We're visiting some of our solar farms this year, giving you an inside look of a live operating solar project. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on these videos. Once the contract is signed, your project enters into the development term. During the development term, our team performs due diligence on two main categories, permitting and interconnection. Permitting refers to working with the authority having district or AHJ for short, to adhere to the rules and regulations of the AHJ for that particular site. Interconnection refers to working with the applicable utility to determine the path to interconnecting to the grid. Between these two processes, we get a very good idea of the viability of your particular parcel for solar. Also, during this time, our team will likely conduct site visits to assess the land firsthand. These visits help us gather crucial information on potential obstacles that might not be evident on paper or virtually. Our team will be in contact with you throughout the process so that there are no surprise visits and you stay informed throughout the project development process. There is minimal disruption to your land during the development period up until the construction start date. So you can rest assured that you may continue using the land for its current purpose, whether that's crops, grazing livestock, or recreation. At this point, you may be wondering how a project like this is paid for and whether a developer can finance, mortgage, or assign your land. And most importantly, what are you responsible for? A key part of our process of developing a solar farm is partnering with lenders that provide us with financing so that we can build the projects. When going through the lease, you'll notice sections that refer to assignment and financing provisions. These sections are required by our lenders, thereby required to make the project feasible. The lender protections ensure the project is built and maintained to specific standards, no matter the circumstance. All in all, these protections provide peace of mind for you, knowing your land is in good hands and the project is set up for success. Up to this point, we've discussed leasing your land, but did you know you can sell your land even during a solar land lease? Thinking about the future of your land is important. You might wonder if a lease restricts your ability to sell. Luckily, you retain ownership of your land throughout the lease agreement. This means you can absolutely sell it if you decide to. But here's the key point to remember. As the solar developer, we need a heads up if you're considering selling your land. This allows us to smoothly transition any communication and payments to the new owner. It also ensures a positive experience for everyone involved. Thinking ahead is important. You might wonder, 
what happens to your land once the lease term ends? Thankfully, the process is clearly defined and ensures your property is returned in good condition. At the end of the lease, we progress into what's known as the decommissioning term. This is when Pivot removes all infrastructure associated with the project from the land. The decommissioning process itself is a multi-step procedure where our team will carefully remove all racking systems, which is the framework that supports the solar panels, followed by dismantling of wiring, electrical equipment, inverters, transformers, and any concrete or steel foundations. The decommissioning security is also a key concept here. This is a financial guarantee, often required by AHJs, that sets aside funds to cover the cost of decommissioning. In the meantime, you can rest assured that your land will be well cared for throughout the lease term and return to its original, if not better, condition upon lease termination. This video reviews the typical lifespan of a solar farm and the intricate details of the decommissioning process. Check it out after this one. As solar experts, Pivot is here to guide you every step of the way. When you work with us, you gain a long-term partner who will be with you from the beginning to the very end of the project. Head over to our website at pivotenergy.net to learn more or contact me directly using my email listed in the description. Thanks for joining me, and don't forget to subscribe for more videos on the exciting world of solar energy. See you next time.